Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview question for SQL PLSQL developer. In the previous set of videos, we saw about what is a subquery and what are the types of subquery and we saw with an example about the simple subquery. In this video, we will see about what is a correlated subquery with an example and in the next video, we will see about the summary of difference between a simple subquery, correlated subquery and what is an inline view. Let us start with the types of subquery. So we saw in detail about uh, in the previous videos like there are two types of subquery. At a high level it is like a non-correlated subquery and another one is like correlated subquery. Non-correlated subquery we can further classify into single row subquery, multi-row subquery, multi-column subquery. The main difference between a, a simple subquery and a correlated subquery is that in terms of simple subquery the inner query will get evaluated and executed and the result of the inner query will be used as an input to the outer query. Whereas in terms of correlated subquery, the inner query is dependent on the outer query. In case of simple subquery, the inner query will get evaluated first, then the result will be used. Whereas in terms of correlated subquery, both the outer query and the inner query will get executed side by side. That is because the inner query will use the column from the outer query. So here is an example for the correlated subquery. As you can see here, in outer query we have the employee table which is referenced by, as, by an alias A and in the inner query there is a, again we are referencing the employee table with an alias B whereas the inner query will refer the outer query. That is the inner query will refer the column from a outer query table. So this is the main difference between a correlated subquery compared to the non-correlated subquery. Let us now understand how this correlated subquery is getting executed and what should be your answer from the interview point of view. Once you understand how this is getting executed, you will be able to answer in a much cleaner way in the interview. Let us now see how the correlated subquery is getting executed. It actually starts with the outer query. It's This is one main difference between this uh, non-correlated subquery and the correlated subquery. In a non-correlated subquery, the inner query gets eva evaluated first. That is, inner query gets executed first. Whereas in correlated subquery, it starts from the outer query. So what it will do? It starts with the one row from the outer query. Suppose if the outer query is returning 10 record. It takes one record that is like a for every one record, it executes the inner query. So it will start with the outer query, takes the first record, then goes to the inner query. Then for the value, this executes the inner query for this condition. So this is the second step. In the second step, the inner query will get executed and it computes the result, whatever we mentioned in the inner query. In the third step, the inner query's result will be evaluated with the condition. So this is the first step. Here is the second step. This is the third step. In the third step, it evaluates the condition. If the condition satisfies, then the particular row from the outer query will be qualified for displaying. So this keep continuing in a loop till all the records of the outer query are evaluated. So this is the main difference. Let us understand in detail with an example now. So here is the same query. Uh, this query is actually computing the person who is getting the maximum salary. Let us see how this is actually computing the information. Since I have referred like uh, the same table twice, I'm just taking a copy of a table here. But in, in fact, this is a single table only. Since we referred twice, I'm just taking two copies for a better understanding. Let me just call this as a table A that is alias A and here is the alias B. So what it will do first it will start with the first row that is for the first row where employee name is King. That is the first step. Then it takes this salary and come checks the condition here that is it goes to the B table check select star from the B table where the salary is greater than 5000. So obviously it will just it will be able to get only one row. Now the count will be one. So it will check whether one equal to one. Yes. Now for the first record it is getting one is equal to one. So this record is qualified for display. Then it will start with the second row. Second row the salary is 2850. It checks how many records greater than 2850. Actually there are two records greater than 2850. That is greater than or equal to 2850. So the count of uh, star will give two. Now it will check 1 is equal to 2. 1 is not equal to 2 then so the second record is not qualified. 
same way it keep computing for each and every row since all the other rows are not qualified it will not display all this record only the first record is qualified so it reports the first record that's how we get the uh, person who is getting a maximum salary see this is the actual underlying concept how correlated subquery works i would suggest you take this query just execute by yourself compare row by row between the outer query to the inner query then only you will be able to understand the correlated subquery much better okay uh, now we'll see few more examples of this correlated subquery so here is a simple query write a query to find the employees having at least one person reporting under him so this is the same employee record so basically what i'm expecting is you need to write a query to find the list of employee who has at least one reporting person so in this case scott has one reporting person so he is eligible ford has one reporting person so all these persons don't have any report so all these persons are not eligible john's has two reporting person so he is also eligible blake has in fact five reporting person so he is eligible clark is having one reporting so he is eligible of course king so now we should get king john's blake clark scott and ford ideally we should get five records as a output let us see how to write this query with and without using a correlated subquery part so in fact this is our first query to find the uh, list of uh, employee who is getting a maximum salary let us write the uh, uh, next query so here is another uh, query just for our understanding here is a simple query which computes the list of employees who is getting a salary more than the average salary of department in fact here also we are using the correlated subquery only so if you can see here the outer query is table that is a dot department we are referring in the inner query in fact without using correlated subquery also you will be able to do if you can see here this is not actually a correlated subquery in fact this is you can say that this is a simple query but normally we'll call this as a inline view so first we are computing a department wise average salary that we are comparing with employee then we are fetching the list of employees who is getting the more than average salary in fact both these queries fetches the same result whereas the first query is using a correlated subquery way the second query is in a non correlated subquery subquery part now let us see how to write a sql to find the list of employees having at least one a uh, report is under him as you can see here this is a non correlated way by which we are writing for example i am just simply finding the list of managers simple a list of manager from the employee id that means these person have at least one uh, reporting under him i am simply using this as a inner query in fact this is a single uh, multi row subquery we are not using the correlated subquery the same functionality we can do through using the correlated subquery also so here i am checking in the inner query i am checking for every employee from the outer query whether he has a whether he is working as a manager or not if yes i am just checking the count okay if yes i am just checking the count and i am just computing here so here exactly the same problem we are trying to um, fetch using the correlated subquery method so there is one more way it's not necessary that you have to use only the conditions here in fact we can use exist or not exist way also in fact this is exactly the um, uh, same solution using a exist in fact this is also a correlated with an exist keyword usage let us see one more example now let us try to find the list of department that doesn't have any employee okay so here is a here is a query as you can see here we are using the department in the outer query and employee in the inner query and i am checking the uh, department's uh, department number is equal to the employee department number i am just using a not exist so this is another usage like a correlated subquery to find out uh, the list of uh, department which doesn't have any employee in fact if i want to find the list of department which has an employee i'm just using only the exist i'm removing i've removed the not keyword so this will give us the list of department that has the employees okay If you learn something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new feature videos interview questions sql practical question and concept videos if you want any questions to be answered you can drop in the comment section or you can drop to this mail id thanks a lot for watching this video